their names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place.
fade away Oh, let all the other names fade away Until there's only you, God Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Say, let all the other names today thank God for the spirit of the Lord for the wonderful ministry of the amen the praise team we celebrate the Lord for them and thank God for each of you that have assembled uh, in this place uh, tonight we honor the Lord for his goodness and I'm excited as always about the word of God but I believe that God has a word to speak to our hearts tonight and I believe that God will minister life to each of us this is a very powerful season that we're in uh, the season of Pentecost, and we've been marching the Pentecost for uh, a number of weeks. We took a, a, a break uh, during uh, Mother's Day uh, and shared a word that God put in my heart uh, for that day. And to, uh, tonight, I want us to let's continue uh, sharing what God has been speaking uh, concerning. Uh, the march to Pentecost. We praise the name of the Lord and we celebrate him uh, tonight for his goodness. I want to, if you would, let me call your attention uh, to the book of Luke chapter 24, uh, verse uh, number 19 uh, through 24. Luke uh, chapter 24, uh, verse number uh, 19 uh, through verse number uh, 24. We praise God. Uh, the Bible declares in this text, uh, verse 19, said, and he said unto them, What things, and they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And he goes on to say, And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him uh, to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been... Uh, he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, uh, today is the third day since these things were done. In verse 22, yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. When they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. In verse 24, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not, is what the word says. They 
found the sepulcher, as the women said, but Jesus they did not see. As our heads are bowed, God, we love you tonight and thank you for your presence and God, for your power, for the revelation that you'll give us, for the understanding that you give us, God, of your word. We pray that you would give understanding, cause yokes to be destroyed and lives to be transformed. God calls us to hear, receive your word, and then commit our hearts to applying the word to our life, that, God, we might grow by its application, and then see, God, you as you desire that we should see you. Help us, God, tonight to be elevated in our faith and our belief that you're God, that I believe, God, that you love us. And then, God, convict us, and God, empower and equip us with the powerful knowledge that, God, we love you. God, we thank you tonight and give you praise and believe by faith that it's already done. And we celebrate you for it right now. In Jesus' name, every believer say thank God. Amen. Amen. We praise uh, the Lord and give him glory for his faithfulness toward us. I thank God for each of you. Again, tonight we're celebrating you and thanking God for his presence uh, today, for his power, for how he has been faithful to us and moving in the lives of every believer tonight and touching us in a manner that gives us understanding of the word of God. We've been uh, doing this uh, series, uh, been marching to Pentecost. I started some time ago, and I'll give you more update on this uh, perhaps tomorrow as we uh, endeavor to bring to a close uh, this series of word uh, for this season. Uh, and I, I started sharing about, uh, listen, the boldness that we should uh, you know, walk in in the Lord. Then I talked to you about the benefits of the resurrection. Then we shared to you about the blessings that God bestowed upon uh, the disciples. These are the things that transpired during the 40 days that Jesus walked the earth. After the resurrection, uh, he could have, and the question is whether or not uh, you know, Jesus, or why did Jesus walk the earth for 40 days, spend this time with the disciples? And that's what I want to get you to, uh, to believe or, or to hear as we're marching from the resurrection or from the Passover all the way uh, to Pentecost. And I want you to just address the, the specific question about why Jesus spent that time here on the earth with the disciples versus coming out of the grave, giving them a high five and catching his cloud back to glory. But there are things that the Lord desired to convey to the disciples, and he spent that time speaking to them and fellowshipping with them so that there are specific things that they learned uh, from Jesus while he's here on earth and before he uh, goes back to glory. Uh, and I want to share with you about this. Now, this, this covers the thing that we're talking about right now. It's in the initial part of the 40 days. And then uh, perhaps tomorrow, the Lord says the same. I want to cover uh, specific uh, events that took place during the last 10 days uh, you know, uh, after uh, Passover and before the advent uh, of uh, the Holy Ghost, before the Holy Ghost came into the earth. So there are 40 days that Jesus spent, and then he went back to glory. Then there are 10 days from that time to the, the, the Pentecost took place. And tomorrow I want to focus on the day of Pentecost. And let me just mention that while we're here. We've been in another setting on Monday nights and Friday nights on our, uh, on our prayer line covering a celebration of uh, what is called in our church and what was initiated by our former presiding bishop, the Bishop uh, Charles Edward Blake, uh, a pilgrimage to Pentecost. And we've been uh, doing that in this church for a long time. The Lord put on our to preach uh, this series during this time to sort of overlay uh, that uh, uh, part of our ministry. And uh, But we want to invite you to, uh, on Monday night, 9 o'clock p.m., join our prayer line, and we're believing God for the Holy Ghost uh, to listen, to be mighty and powerful and present, and many will be filled with the Holy Ghost during that 9 p.m. Monday night uh, assembly, uh, and there's going to be tremendous numbers of refillings that we're going to experience during that time. We believe God to do it, so we thank God for you, but tomorrow is 
Pentecost Sunday. Now, all churches and many churches know and many of the believers know uh, about Pentecost Sunday. It's just the Sunday closest to uh, the day of, uh, of Pentecost. Uh, but know that there are 50 days. Tomorrow is day 49. The day that churches assemble is the Lord's Day, and we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. But there is a Monday coming, and I want you to know that's the day that the Holy Ghost was literally poured out. We want you to hear and receive that uh, in your hearts, and then make plans to join us 9 p.m. Uh, on our prayer line on Monday night. And I believe the Lord will do great exploits, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, the, the Word of God, as I've uh, shared with you, I've been sharing this over uh, the, the last several weeks. And today, I want to talk to you about, as I mentioned, I shared about being bold, shared about uh, this and the benefits of the resurrection, and then sharing uh, with you also about uh, the Lord blessing the disciples when he uh, you know, got up from the grave and during his 40 days, uh, we also... Uh, today, we want to approach uh, another um, uh, specific aspect of the Lord's teaching why he's here for the 40 days and addressing why he's here. And today, I'm going to talk to you from this theme, believe. And then tomorrow, I close uh, talking about the last 10 days, and that's going to be the bonus of uh, this march to Pentecost. The bonus is what God will, or the bounty is what God will do. Uh, in our midst on tomorrow and then on uh, Monday night. Uh, the, the thing that, that we said, we want to make sure that we get the fact that God has been teaching us for this 40-day period. Jesus was uh, here to explain the word to the disciples, and Jesus was here to open their minds during this 40-day period that they could understand the scriptures, and God wants you to understand the scriptures as well. He wanted to bless the disciples. He wanted to teach them not to judge uh, according to the body. And that's one thing that, that the Lord was, was teaching and admonishing us during this time, not to know any man according to the flesh. So he's not speaking to us just to our about our bodies, but God says we should know one another according to the spirit of God. He says, don't know a man according to his flesh. He says, don't know him even according to his age, or don't judge him according to his ethnicity. But God says to know every man according to the Spirit. Jesus spent part of his 40 days trying to get the disciples, uh, is the theme for tonight, to simply uh, believe. You might say that you all you thought that they already believed. Listen, but the scriptures, as we look at this, uh, at what the Bible says, I, I, I did not say that they did not, uh, listen, that they were not saved, there was not believers uh, in the, the Messiahship of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord's focus uh, and purpose uh, in earth was still, uh, listen, unclear to them. They walked with him, but they really did not understand what Jesus' purpose was right here on the earth. Uh, the 40 days are actually found, if you're looking to study this, uh, the 40 days are actually found in the last chapter of Matthew, found in the last chapter of Mark, the last chapter uh, of Luke, the last chapter of John, and then the first and the last 10 days uh, before Pentecost actually takes place uh, in the first chapter of Acts. Let's go tonight, if you would, to Mark chapter 16, uh, verse 9 uh, through 11. The Bible says, now Jesus, having risen from death early on the first day of the week, appeared uh, first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. And the Bible says she went and reported it to those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. And then it said, now, it says, when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, the Bible says they did not believe it. Now, he's spending this time, listen, encouraging the disciples to believe. These were the men. Remember now, this verse refers to the 11, uh, previously the 12, but you know that Judas uh, hangs himself. So for the 50 days, now they are called uh, the 11. 
uh, for a greater part of it today, they are called the 11. These are the 11 disciples who walked with Jesus for three and a half years, but the text says they did not believe the purpose for which Jesus had come to the earth. So one of the purposes during the 40 days was to get us to believe him. Amen? The verse refers to, listen, the 11. Now the Bible says this. The Bible says they did not believe. How many times did Jesus say to them, I'm going to be mocked, scourged, crucified, buried, and will rise again on the third day, and none of them were at the tomb waiting for him to get up on day number three. After that, uh, Mark 16 and verse 12, if you go there, Mark 16, verse number 12, the Bible says after that, he appeared in a different form to two of them as they were walking along the way to the country. They returned to Jerusalem, and the Bible says they told others uh, about what happened. But the Bible says, but they did not believe them either. And this is, listen, look at what this says. It says, but after that, he appeared in a different form to two of them as they were walking along the way to the country. Now, this refers to the two of the 70, not two of the 11 now, but two of the 70, which we talked about uh, in a previous message, the road to Emmaus. The Lord appeared to two on the road to Emmaus, and uh, he spoke to them. They went, the Bible says in Mark 16, uh, it says that the, the two returned to Jerusalem and told the others, but they did not believe them, them, uh, them either. And what this says is they told others. This is the 11. I want you to get that. Now, the second time the 11 uh, in the text has been given information on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that they did not, the 11 who had been with Jesus for four, three and a half years, did not believe them. Now let's look at verse number 14 in the same verse. That was Mark 16, verse 12 and 13. Look at Mark 16, verse number 14. It says, later, Jesus appeared to the 11 himself. If Mary couldn't get them to believe, if the two on the road to Emmaus couldn't get them to believe, now here comes Jesus to the 11 himself. He says, and as they were reclining at the table, he called them to account for their unbelief and the hardness of their heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen from death. Listen, they did not believe Jesus. Uh, they did not believe Mary. They did not believe the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. That's why Jesus Listen, had to stay here for 40 days teaching them to believe. Luke 24, verse 9, the Bible says, and after returning from the tomb, uh, verse 9 through 11, it says, they reported all these things to the 11 apostles, and then the Bible says, and then they reported it to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna, who is the wife of Herod Stewart. Uh, and Mary, the mother of James. Also, the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But their report seemed to the disciples or to them like idle talk and nonsense. And the Bible says, and they would not believe what the women were telling them. I want to tell you that, listen, you've got to be someone that really believe in who, uh, listen, the Lord Jesus Christ really is. So three things I want to tell you tonight real briefly, uh, and our time is quickly expiring. One, I want you to believe that Jesus is God. Secondly, I want you uh, also uh, to believe that, listen, that God loves you. And then thirdly, I want you to believe, listen to this, lean in real quickly. I want you to believe thirdly that you, that you love God. First of all, believe that Jesus is not just the Son of God, but Jesus is God the Son. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So you got to believe that Jesus is God. Secondly, believe that God loves you. 
Thirdly, I want you to leave here tonight believing that you love God. First thing, believe Jesus is God. Second thing, believe that, listen, God loves you. Third thing, believe. Third point, believe that you love God. Listen to this if you would follow along for a moment. I want to just share a couple accounts from the word of God that might uh, bear uh, some clarification on the, the point that I want to convey. First point, believe Jesus is God. Mark chapter 9, uh, if you look at that, verse number 14, and it is a, it's a long passage. I'll paraphrase much of this just so that we can get through it uh, uh, real quick. Uh, but I need you to lean in to what the word is saying right now because what God is saying, you got to know that, listen, how important this is. It's just as important to know that Jesus is God and know that God loves you and know, thirdly, that you really love God. This is uh, the point. Six days later, Mark 9, uh, chapter 9, verse 14, and the total of this, you can just write this down and study it more on your own, verse uh, Mark 9, 14 through 29, and it says in the Amplified, it says, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured. That means he was changed in form before them, and he began to shine brightly with divine and regal glory. And the Bible says his clothes became radiant and dazzling, intensely white. And as no launderer on earth can whiten uh, them, but Elijah appeared uh, to them along with Moses. And they were having a conversation in this transfiguration with Jesus. Peter responded and said to Jesus, Rabbi, Master. It is good for us to be here. Let us make three sacred tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he, listen, did not really know what to say because they were terrified and stunned by the miraculous uh, sight. Then a cloud formed overshadowing them, and the voice came out of the cloud, this is my beloved son, listen to him and obey him. The Bible says when they came back uh, in the other nine disciples, now there were three on the mountain with Jesus, right? That was Peter, James, and John. Now this is early uh, in their walk with the Lord. And, and so now that there are still 12. So there's three on the mountain and nine in the valley. And when they came down the mountain, the Bible says, if you look at what it's saying here uh, in this, this text, it said they saw a large crowd around them, the scribes questioning and argue, arguing with them. Immediately when the entire crowd saw Jesus, they were startled and began running up to greet him. He asked them, what are you discussing with them? One of the crowd replied to him, teacher, I brought you my son possessed with a spirit which makes him unable to speak. It is a mute demon. It's a demon that renders uh, inoperable the ability of articulation. And then he says uh, to them, it throws him uh, it says whenever it seizes him, intending to do harm, it throws him down. And the Bible says, and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes stiff. I told your disciples uh, to drive out this devil, and they could not do it, he replied. Oh, Jesus says, believe, unbelieving and faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Now, the Bible says that, listen, Jesus said these boys did not believe. I told you he came to help them to believe. And what Jesus is saying here in this text as he talks to his disciples, those who are close to him, my point right now is I want you to see that Jesus is not just, listen, the son of God, but Jesus is God the son. Look at what Jesus does. The Bible says, he, Jesus said, you are a faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring, Jesus says, the boy to me. 
The listen, the father said, I brought it to you boys, and they couldn't do anything with this devil. So Jesus said, listen, y'all don't have any faith. Men, what's your problem? How long is it going to take me to convince you that it's time to start walking by faith, believing and trusting God? And then he told the, the, the father, look, because you know, because I want you to know that I'm God the son. I want you just to bring the boy to me is what he told the father. And the Bible says, it goes on to declare this. The Bible says, it says they brought the boy to Jesus. And when the demonic spirit saw Jesus, immediately it threw the boy into a convulsion. And falling, listen, to the ground, the boy began rolling around and foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? Now think about this. And as he answered, uh, the father said, since childhood, the demon has often thrown him both into the fire, into the water, intending to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us, Jesus said to him, you say to me if you can. Listen to what the Lord is declaring. This is a situation that's been going on for a long time. Now, it's amazing to me that this boy is being, listen, overtaken and uh, being uh, totally possessed by a demonic spirit. And here is Jesus, the, listen, the God and creator of the universe, standing in a conversation, listen, interviewing the father. Here is this demon having his way with this father's son, and Jesus simply turns to the dad and asks him, well, how long has this been going on with your child? Don't tell me that, listen, he's not God because he is so not overwhelmed by the magnitude of the situation. I wonder why Jesus is asking him, uh, how long has this boy been going through this? Listen, I wonder what the crowd was doing while they were watching what the boy was doing, seizing and foaming at the mouth and rolling around on the ground and making guttural noises coming out of his mouth, the inability to appropriately, listen, articulate. But the boy is going through. But Jesus is asking the father, listen, uh, general questions about the boy's livelihood, about his life. He says, how long has this been going on? Do you think it matters to Jesus about diagnosing, listen, a circumstance that you're facing? Because he's God, listen, all by himself. And if he's God and we know that he is, listen, God has the power to do anything. And I believe if you look at this situation here, he says, how long has it been happening to the boy? And he answered, since childhood. And then the demon, the Bible says, began to show out. Uh-huh. He began to see, listen, seeing the people around, the demon is now, listen, trying to have a heyday in front of the crowd. Jesus went, uh, listen, and Jesus asked the father, how long has it been going on? And the father uh, said, listen, uh, it's been a while since this happened to him. He's been going through this for a long time. I'm, listen, moved by the fact that what Jesus shows us is this. He keeps asking, listen, the father questions instead of immediately, listen, casting that devil out. But what the word reminds me of is this. I want you to know that Jesus is just being who Jesus is. It's not the first time Jesus was in the midst of a chaotic situation, but Jesus was so peaceful and calm in his spirit. I'm here to tell you tonight, that's just the way God is. I'm trying to tell you, you got to believe that Jesus is God. Y'all remember when Jesus was on the boat with the disciples and the storm, listen, was raging all around them. And do you remember what Jesus was doing? The Bible tells me that Jesus was asleep on the boat. He wasn't unnerved by the magnitude of the situation, but Jesus was so calm and peaceful in his spirit that he was on the back of the boat asleep. Listen to what the word says. I've got to hurry on here. You got to know that, listen, whatever your problem is right now, I want you to know that, listen, although you might be unnerved by what you're going through, I'm here to tell you that God is not unnerved by your situation. 
situation. I do want to correct one thing, however, as I make this point and then cut across the field. Listen, because Jesus was asking the Father, how long has this boy been acting, listen, uh, under the influence of this demonic spirit? Listen, you know Jesus could have already laid hands on the boy and called him into perfection in his health. But Jesus is merely turning perhaps and looking to the father and quizzing him on the diagnosis of the boy's situation. I want you to know that, listen, it's not that Jesus was unconcerned, listen, about the boy. But the truth of the matter is that Jesus was totally unimpressed by the demon. It's not that Jesus was unconcerned about the boy's condition, but Jesus was unimpressed by what the demon was doing. I'm here to tell you tonight that no matter how crazy your situation is, I'm here to tell you that God is not impressed by the demon that's trying to wreak havoc in your life. You ought to be someone that knows that if God be for me, he's more than anything that can ever be against me. You better know that the Lord, listen, is not impressed by, listen, the fact that your money is funny because the Lord has the power, listen, to bring you out victoriously. He's not, listen, overwhelmed by the attack against your health because we serve Jehovah Rapha. The Bible says, I am the Lord. That healeth you. You got to be someone that's so, listen, in tune to God that you are not overwhelmed by the present circumstances in your life. You got to listen, be someone that knows that God can heal. God can deliver no matter how, listen, traumatic things seem to be right now. You got to rest assured that the Lord will deliver and not only will he deliver He'll deliver on time. The Bible said that this, he declared that, listen, that God will perfect uh, what concerns you. Uh, so you may as well not wait until it's over. You ought to get up from where you are right now uh, and start giving God the glory. Uh, you ought to celebrate God uh, because you believe uh, that if God be for you, uh, he's more than anything uh, that can ever be against you. Uh, I want to remind you as I exit here, uh, listen, it's not that God is un concerned about where you are. God is just not impressed by the demonic influence that the enemy has unleashed against your life. Listen, I told you about the situation with Jesus in this matter even. It's so calm. He just simply says, watch this, y'all. Bring the boy to me. Oh, glory to God. Listen, you're running around complaining. You're wandering around, listen, wringing your hands. Listen, your axons and dendrites are firing. Glory to God, trying to figure out how you're going to get out of what you're in the midst of right now. But I hear Jesus saying, just bring the situation to me. You're overwhelmed by what you're going through. But I'm here to tell you tonight, God, God is not impressed. Listen, by the circumstance that the enemy has unleashed in your life, you better get ready to come out. You better get ready to, listen, walk in your deliverance. You better get ready to see God do exploits in your life. You got to get ready to see God move in the midst of your situation because there's nobody that can do you like God. Listen to what the word says. The Bible reminds Reminds us, y'all. And he tells us quite clearly uh, that, listen, he tells them, just bring the boy to me. Uh, so, listen, I want everybody that's in this circle tonight uh, to listen, to bring your problem to the Lord, uh, to cast your cares upon him. Uh, listen, because he's concerned about what you're going through. Uh, listen, there is, listen, what the, the father then says to the Lord uh, that I think is one of the listen, most classic responses uh, of anybody that's ever been faced with a situation. Uh, listen, all through the word of God. Uh, the Bible goes on to declare. Uh, listen to what this says, y'all. Uh, it says uh, listen, the demon has often had his way with the boy, uh, throwing him in water and throwing him is it in fire intending to kill him. Uh, but here's what the father says. Uh, he says, but if you can do anything. He said, take pity on us and help us. Uh, and Jesus says, listen, he said, you say, you say to me if I can help. Did you hear what Jesus said? He's God. The boy is in the midst of, listen, a traumatic situation. And the father says, God, listen, Jesus, if you can help us. 
Jesus said, excuse me, do you recognize who I am? I'm not just a carpenter's son. I am God the son. Jesus didn't want to throw his resume on him, but he said to him, listen, you say to me if I can, as if this demon has authority over me. And he says to them, look at what the, the, the narrative says. You say if I can. Jesus said all things are possible for the one who believes and trusts in me. So Jesus says to the man, it's not whether if I can. Jesus says if you can just believe. Jesus said, don't say, listen, don't question whether I can do, do my part. He said, I want to know if you can believe. I want to challenge every person in this circle tonight. Listen, I need you to believe that Jesus is God the Son. And whatever your circumstance is, you got to be ready tonight to throw your cares on him. Jesus spent that time before he caught the cloud to glory, teaching the disciples to believe him. He said, all things are possible, to listen, uh, for the one who believes and trusts in me. Immediately the father of the boy cried out with a desperate, piercing cry, saying, I do believe. This is a classic word. This is a classic word coming up. You need to hear this. He says, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd was rapidly gathering around him, he rebuked, listen, the foul spirit, saying to it, you deaf and mute spirit. I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. Listen, what Jesus is telling us, y'all, is this. When he says this to the Father, uh, listen, he says this to him. He says, listen, it's not whether I can do it, but it's whether you can believe that I can do it. Oh, glory to God. You got to believe. The man said, listen, I do believe, Jesus, but help my unbelief. Let me, listen, uh, just leave a word with you real quickly about what we've got to do. Listen, to help the areas of our life where we don't believe. Listen, there is a verses in the word of God. It's a fact. Listen, there's no if about whether Jesus can do something. Uh, listen, you got to put your own faith into action. Listen, faith does not increase <coughs> by sitting around. Let me read to you uh, James chapter 2. Paul says to us in his writings, he says that, listen, if you're going to have faith, listen, through for salvation, listen, by grace, through faith. He says that no works are required because salvation is free. But James tells us, listen, in James chapter 2, verse 21 through 24, this is not a challenge to what Paul says because, listen, Paul talks about faith according to the law, which is, listen, which is about salvation. But here James is talking about works according to faith. He says, if you're going, listen, to have faith, he says you got to do something. You can't sit on the couch talking about, I got a whole lot of faith. You got to get off the couch. Look at what James says. He says, James chapter 2, verse 21 through 24, says, wasn't our ancestor Abraham made right with God by works when he placed his son Isaac on the sacrificial altar? Isn't it obvious that faith and works are yoked partners that faith expresses itself in works. It says, you, listen, faith requires validation. Faith, listen, I know what you believe by how you behave. When you give your problem to God, you're saying to God, I believe you can solve it. I believe you can handle it. Listen, and the Bible says the full meaning of believe is what he said. He said that, work, that the works are works of faith. Do you hear what I'm saying? These are not works of the law, but these are works of faith is what this says. Works of faith are different from works of the law. Amen. But both are important. Both are critical. But they're not to be confused. All the point we ever make in our teaching is that you don't work to get saved, but you work to listen because you are saved. Amen. We make no bones about that in our understanding of what the word of God says. And James is talking about works of faith because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please God. Once you've been saved, watch this, by faith, uh-huh, listen, then you got to work and have faith in God to continue to please God. You're saved now. Uh-huh. Now begin to learn about the word of God so you can walk by faith, believing that God can do anything but fail. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Let's finish that verse in the, listen, in, in the message Bible. The full meaning of believe in the scripture sentence, Abraham believed God and was set right with God. Include, listen, that includes Abraham's action. These don't misunderstand that it's works of faith is what this is, not works of the law. Works of the law is what it takes for us to be saved. Works of faith now is what it takes for us, watch it, to please God, which ultimately, listen, de determines whether or not you are, listen, remain saved. Does that make sense to everybody in here? It says it includes your action. Isn't that mesh of believing and acting that God Abraham named God's friend? It's not evident that a person is made right with God by a barren faith, but by a faith that's fruitful in works. It means, listen, you don't please God with barren faith. You please God with faith that's fruitful and productive. Faith, the Bible said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the Lord is saying, watch this, y'all. Listen, you can get saved. Listen, but once you're saved, you got to demonstrate, listen, have your faith, listen, grow more and more as you learn to love God, as you learn to trust God, as you learn to believe God. That means that I'm going to do more of the right things as my faith improves. Let me hurry to a close, and I'll bring it closer home to you. One last point I want to make about this, the fact that there ought to be, listen, some works behind your faith. Listen, in this church, we just installed a, a lighting package that, that listen, that, that, that sets this church up on a... <coughs> on motion sensors in each of the, in most of the rooms that's in the church. And so what happens, you can walk by, listen, the room, and it's completely dark. But if you walk in the room, watch the acknowledgement of the activity now in the room cause the light to come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's the thing that faith, listen, requires. It's like, listen, the power is not that God doesn't have power to do stuff. The, listen, but until faith, until action comes, there is no power to be manifested, to be demonstrated. That means until, watch it, there's activity on our part in the room, the power does not kick in. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When, listen, when you show up with faith, that's what causes God to step up and do what only God can do in your life. And that's what the Lord wants us to know. Listen, you got to believe that, that this in Jesus is God. Second point, believe that God loves you. Very quickly, these verses. There is a disciple uh, that the Bible says, uh, listen, that in, uh, in, in St. John chapter 13, verse 13, 23, John repeatedly says that he's the disciple whom Jesus loves. And the Bible said that, listen, that, that, that John writes about himself, <coughs> that he believed God. I'm here to tell you the reason why John believed God is because John knew that God loved him. God, listen, you got to believe that God loves you. Jesus, you got to believe that Jesus is God the Son. Then you got to believe that God loves you. G John believed, <coughs> listen, God and, God, and John believed God because John believed, listen, that God loved him. In St. John 13, verse 23, the Bible says, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved or esteemed was leaning against Jesus' chest in the Amplified. Say, listen, John is saying, when you see one of the disciples written by John, John's referring to himself. John chapter uh, 20, verse 8, I'm moving quickly, says, so the other disciple who had reached the tomb first went in also, went in too, and he saw the wrappings on the face cloth, and the Bible says, watch this, and believed without any doubt that Jesus had risen from the dead. You see that? Listen, the reason why John believed that Jesus was resurrected is because John knew that God loved him. Let me read one last verse. verse uh, St. John chapter 21, verse 20. Bible says, Peter turned and saw the disciples, watch this, whom Jesus loved. This is John writing about himself. John knew that God loved him. He says, in following them, the one who also had leaned back on his chest at the, listen, at the, at the, at the Last Supper and, and had said, Lord, who is it 
that is going to betray you. Uh huh. Listen, this is a disciple whom Jesus loved. Let me close and I tell you this. Got to hurry on. Listen, you got to know tonight that, listen, that God loves you. John knew it, but watch what this John knowing that God loved him. Look at what it led to in John 20, verse 8. The Bible says, when the other disciple, he's talking about himself, who had reached the tomb first, when he went in, he saw the wrappings and the face cloth. The Bible says, and he believed. Jesus spent the 40 days here teaching disciples to believe. John believed because he knew that God loved him. Whenever you're doubting that God knows and cares, you're doubting. The Bible says that faith worketh by what? By love. Third thing I want you to do as I close tonight, you got to believe, watch this, that you love God. I think this is so powerful. You got to not only know that, listen, that Jesus, uh, listen, is God. Number one. Second thing, you got to not only know that, listen, that God loves you, but thirdly, you got to believe that you love God. The Bible says in John 21, verse 15 through 19, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Peter, to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter said to him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said unto Peter, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? And Peter said to him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Third time, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Loveth thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time. He says, loveth thou me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee that when you were young, you gird yourself and walked. Listen, whether you, you wouldn't go. But when you shall be old, he says, you're going to stretch forth your hands. You're going to be girded with you. And you're going to carry it. You're going to be taking places that you would rather not go. This spake he signifying by what death, listen, Peter was going to die to glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Now listen, y'all know Peter was an interesting brother. I've got to close. All kinds of things Peter did that was really special. Peter, as I said, read in the, in the previous verse, uh, when they were on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter's up there talking. Saying it's good for us, it's, it's good for us to be here. And listen, while he's talking, God spoke from heaven and said to Peter, kind of be quiet. Just listen <laughs> to Jesus. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Can you just hush your much, Peter, and hear him? Think about what Peter did uh, on the sea when Jesus was walking across the, the water in the middle of the night. In the middle of a storm, and he says, uh, and, and, and Jesus told them, he said, the first they're scared. And Jesus said to them, it is I, be not afraid. Jesus said, Peter, Jesus who can't lie, he said, Peter, it's me. Y'all don't be scared. And then what did Peter say? Peter said, if it's you. And I wonder if Jesus dropped his hands at that point. That Peter, you are incorrigible. That means you are without him. And so what you got to know is that you got to know, listen, that you love God. Even in the challenging times of your life, you got to know that, listen, that not only does God love you, but you got to know in your heart that you love God. And you got to keep pressing. You got to keep declaring. Huh? Even when you've fallen off the fence, you got to get up and keep running back to the cross. Keep repenting. Keep saying, God, I'm sorry. There's no license for you to do the crazy stuff. But you got to know that, listen, you love God. You got to just acknowledge, listen, when Jesus came off that mountain and the, and the boys had blown it with the father's child, they didn't throw in the towel, but they stayed with Jesus. Jesus told them, you all have no faith. They didn't say, well, I may as well go back to fishing. They didn't say, I'm going to quit the church. They stayed with the Lord because they loved him. Amen? Jesus openly and clearly expressed his concern about their faith. He said, y'all are faithless. But they said, Lord, I love you. I'm going to keep following you. 
I want to challenge every person that's within this circle tonight. Jesus spent 40 days here. One of the things he did was teaching us to believe him. I want you to believe that Jesus is God. I want you to believe that God loves you, and I want you to believe tonight that you love God. I want you to believe that. Listen, I want you to keep pressing. I want you to make a decision tonight. No matter where I am, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to make a choice to stay with God and watch what God does in the life of every believer. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, He that comes to God must believe that he is and that God is a rewarder of them that are diligent. God never wants to throw you away, but God wants to save you. Listen, everybody within this circle tonight, real quickly, I want you to bow your heads and your hearts, and I want you to say to the Lord, I need you to save me. I need you to come into my heart. Make me new, make me whole. Make me clean by the power of God. I need you to do a work in my life. That God, I know that I'm not where you desire me to be, but God, my heart is turned toward you. I love you and I want to serve you. Peter said to the Lord, you know all things. Listen, God knows your heart, even above the craziness that you have set yourself in at the moment of, listen, uh, of this celebration around this circle tonight. You can look around your life tonight and listen, you know that you're doing stuff that God's not pleased with, but you also know that you love God. And I want you to make that choice tonight that you're going to stay with God and watch it because you love him. You're going to make a choice tonight that I'm going to put that craziness down. I'm going to follow the Lord. Listen, with my whole heart, I'm going to follow him wholly. Not partially, but I'm not going to follow him like Peter did. At some points of his life, the Bible said that Peter followed him afar off. But Peter got closer to the Lord, especially during the day of Pentecost. And that's the season that we're in right now. I want you to make the same decision tonight. I want you to join together with me in prayer. Every person that's not saved, you want to be saved. Every person that's been struggling and stumbling and sinning and doing things that you know that's unworthy of a child of God. But in your heart, you really want to please God. I'm talking to you tonight. I want you to bow your hearts in your head and say, God, I need you right now because you love God, because you want God to be your Lord. You want him to be your Savior. Bow together with me tonight. I want everybody else to lift your hands around this circle tonight. God, I thank you for the persons that are praying this prayer with me tonight completely and praying it earnestly. As you that need to be saved tonight and want to be saved, I want to give your life to God. I want you to say this tonight with me. Say, Dear God, I confess tonight that I am a sinner. I confess, Lord, that I've done things that are unworthy of a child of God. As you to come into my heart and make me whole, make me new, make me clean. By the power of God and through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'll pray your word in Romans 10, 9 and 10. I confess tonight the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And now I'm saved. Thank you, Father, for coming into my life and saving me. Making me new, making me whole, making me clean. By the power of God, through the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe it's done and by faith declare it. So thank you, Lord, that tonight I'm saved. And I give God praise in Jesus' name. Every believer say thank God. Amen. Listen, those of you that prayed that prayer and you've given your life to the Lord, I want you to put your hands together. And I want you to celebrate God right now over the fact that you have given your heart to God and that now you're serving God and you're seeking him with your whole heart. We praise the name of the Lord for salvation all around this circle. The Bible said that heaven rejoices when one sinner repents. And listen, I want to pray for the rest of those of you that are in this circle tonight. I want to believe God along with you. There's a person tonight that knows that there's a challenge in your life. And the Lord, listen, demonic influence, it, listen, abounds and that you know the challenges abound in your life. But I want you right now to turn your heart toward God and say, God, I'm here to listen, to submit to you. I want you to be Lord in my life. God, I thank you that you are, listen, the way maker. You are the problem solver. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You are the way maker, the door opener. God, you are the peace giver. Do it in my life right now. Lift your hands all around this circle. God, I pray that, God, you, listen, would touch, heal, deliver every person. God, with their hearts open, their hands lifted. And, God, now they stand beneath an open heaven. And you said you would pour out blessings so abundantly. They wouldn't have room enough to receive it. God, I pray tonight that, God, we believe right now that you are God. 
and that because you're God, that there's nothing too hard for you to do. God, we lift up before you every need that exists around this circle. God, where there's need for healing, I thank you for healing sick bodies. I thank you, Lord, for delivering, God, from every malady, every uh, affliction that the enemy tries, God, to attach to our health. We call the devil a liar. We bind sickness. We bind affliction. And God, we lose health and healing right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. We believe it's done. And by faith tonight, we declare it so. And we give you the praise. And believe it's done in Jesus' name. God, I thank you that you are healing. God, relationships, you are healing. God, those circumstances that exist on the job, you are healing, God, minds. And God, you are healing. Oh, God, relationships all around this circle. You're touching finances even right now. And God, I give you the glory. And God, thank you for it, that marriages are being healed by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, thank you right now that God's stamina is being healed. God, trust is being healed right now. I believe it done, and by faith tonight, God, I declare that it is so. And I put my hand together along with those in this circle and give you the praise and declare it done now in Jesus' name. Come on and believe God and celebrate him for the victory right now. There's nobody that can do you like God. We praise him and we celebrate him tonight and give God the glory. Listen, we thank God for those of you, listen, that have a testimony. If you want, listen, prayer and someone to join together with you on one-on-one, -on -one, you can call, listen, you can reach out uh, to our website, www.newbethelchurch.com. You can search for the prayer tab. Uh, listen, that's on our website. Put the information that's requested and listen, someone will call you independently and you can join together with someone one-on-one -on -one to further stand together with you in prayer, believing God to do great exploits in your life. We believe God to do it and by faith we declare that it's done. As you obey, listen, uh, the instructions given, I promise you God will do great things in your life in a powerful and irrefutable way. Nobody can do you like God. Listen, we thank God for each of you. Thank God for those that have given their life to the Lord tonight. We pray that you would go in the chat, uh, listen, uh, uh, room there on the, the, the social media platform that you are joining us on tonight. Give us your name. Give us the city and state that you hail from. And listen, we want to celebrate the Lord along with you. We thank God tonight for salvation. Thank God for those that have been, listen, that have renewed their relationship with the Lord. We praise God for each of you as well. I want to challenge every person tonight uh, that's within this circle to be givers. Those of you that will give tonight, we thank God for you. I want to encourage you. Listen, if you've got financial challenges in your life, there's no greater way to see that financial challenge, listen, dissipated, uh, listen, and even uh, eliminated than by giving and trusting God. We believe God to do it right now. Listen, multiple ways you can give. One, you can give by Givelify, or you can give by mailing your gift into the church. That address that you're going to use if you use Givelify or mail your gift to the church is uh, New Bethel Church of God in Christ, 1520 Little Rock Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. The zip is 28214. Uh, that address again is uh, New Bethel Church of God in Christ, 1520 Little Rock Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. The zip is 28214. Or you can use our cash app. Uh, uh, platform. That if the cash up information is dollar sign N B C L T one five two zero. If you're using our cash app is dollar sign N B C L T one five two zero. And then you can also listen use our website. The web address again is triple w dot uh, listen you can go to the website, search for e-giving and you can share your gift with us there on the, uh, the website www.newbethelchurch.com search for e-giving and you can share your gift with us there I believe that if you give God will do you good as you join with me in prayer I want you listen to be expedient in sharing your gift tonight the Bible is clear when he says the business of the king requires haste don't wait until tonight at 9 o'clock don't wait till tomorrow morning at 615 but tonight I want you right now to make it your business like we were all together in church to sow that seed that God may be glorified. Remember, faith without works is faith that does not exist. Faith without works, James says in James chapter 2, 21, he says it does not 
exists, it is dead faith. Let's trust God tonight. You got a problem financially, show God you trust him. Show God that you know that he's God. And the only way you can do that is by knowing, one, that God loves you as God and that you love him. That's why you respond affirmatively tonight. We thank you in advance for your liberal giving, your powerful generosity tonight. We celebrate God with you, and we celebrate God for you. Our heads are bowed. God, we love you tonight, and thank you for every seed, every sower. God calls God favor to abound in the life tonight of every giver. We call it done, and by faith we declare it so. We give you the praise and believe it's done right now. In Jesus' name, and every believer say, thank God. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Is our sincere prayer. I want to invite you as I close. Tomorrow morning, our in-person service right here at New Bethel Church of God in Christ, 1520 Little Rock Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. The zip is 28214. Come. I know that if you come, the Lord will do you good. May God bless you. 10 o'clock a.m. Join us and watch God do great exploits in your life. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is always our prayer.